Alright, hi there people. I'm sorry if I sound a little sore in the like. I actually am. We are sitting at the moment in the PC9 Advanced. We're actually running in prepared 2.3 bugs and all. So you're going to hear a few little annoyances with the um, sound and the like at the moment. Um, in all honesty, that's not a lot I can do. I don't know what's causing it. Um, and I just loaded up in the wrong one, so... We're going to take a look at the biggest change to date um, as part of the stuff that I want to do for the failure system. Quite a massive rework of the electronic system and you're about to see and just some of that in use. Um, so as we already know, the advanced comes with the EPU and we are going to actually turn down prepared simply to sh quiet out that sound that keeps happening. So with the APU on, you're getting exactly that. You have an external power unit. It's giving you power with the battery and generator bus off. You can do a full system startup. It's basically supplying 28 volts DC power to the, to the um, aircraft. And not that you'd actually find an external power unit that gives you 28 exact, normally it's about 27, somewhere like that. But as long as it's over 26, we're fine. So in this case, we've got 28 volts. Um, it lets us actually slick on and off items. Anybody who has the PC9 already will have noticed something here though. If we remove this, you will notice that this number here is very different. Question is why? Well, for a start, Every switch, every object in this aircraft now uses power correctly. What do I mean by that? Well, if I flick on the instruments, we're not going to get a major change at the moment because all the light sensing diodes in the aircraft are going well. It's bright daylight. You know, we don't exactly want the instruments on. However, if I turn the main panel light, you'll notice that we've got an increase. If I turn it a little bit further, we get another increase. Turn it a little bit further, another increase. Until we're maxed out on it. Same goes for side panel lighting. So all of these have an individual amp draw now. They're all drawing correct amp amperage. Um, if I turn on the nav beacon, or the nav lights I should say, you'll notice that we've got more power being drawn. If I switch that off, power goes back. If I turn on the beacon, we'll see a jump again. Turn it to the strobe, we see another jump. Um, the left and right boost pumps, for example, will give you a massive jump. Turning on the landing lights again, another big jump in power usage. Um, the probes down here are the only one of the few things that haven't been coded in on the power system yet. Um, there's a couple of little bits that are still in work. Um, if we turn some systems on here. All of these displays have had slight code changes and the like. Um, these systems now fail correctly, so basically if I pull any circuit breaker in this aircraft now, 
um, what will happen is you'll lose the amperages that it's drawing and the system will actually go offline how it should in the real aircraft so in the case of these two screens it's actually very interesting because um, I could pull the breaker on this side and both screens continue to work if I pulled the breaker on this side both screens would suddenly die however if I reached down here and pulled the bus tie and then pulled the circuit breaker here only the top screen would die and ditto for this side only the bottom screen would die that's um, little quirks like that make the PC9 really interesting to start adding this little bit extra level of detail into um, On top of that, if I turn this brightness down and up, you'll notice we're getting amp draw. So every screen here is drawing amps based on its brightness. Um, even these, all the individual avionics, all individual power items Um, so, if, for example, as you just saw, if I start brightening the screen again, just like with the electronics, uh, uh, just the light bus, we start getting different amp draws. So, if both screens at full brightness chew up a few amps, um, turning on avionics are all going to draw amps so we're up to a hundred negative 123.5 most likely this panel needs a small redesign before it's a hundred percent accurate we're still getting there at the moment the other um, thing is that even something as simple as how many lights are displaying up on the angle of attack indicator here will change the amp draw for example each one of these lights draws one amp so two of them on it's going to be drawing two amps and so forth um, the Oxygen regulator down here is drawing two amps from memory, so that's also all programmed. The ECS, though, I'm still working on the actual adjustments to the engine that it happened. Um, it'll now draw power correctly, so based on what setting you've got it on. The other, another big change to the aircraft. Um, that will probably go into an update on the normal version at some point is the oxygen system um, after doing a little bit more reading a little bit more research asking a few more questions um, this panel should actually operate even when it's not got power um, basically it's just a regulator underneath and I coded it a little wrong um, in the original release and we'll, I'll look at getting that updated at some point um, so we're going to actually turn off all the extra systems that we've got on here for a moment So that's off, that's off. Oh. 
So you'll notice we've just dropped a lot of amps very, very quickly just by killing the avionics bus and the inverters. They chew a massive power. Um, and it's not necessarily what you can see either. There's systems running in the background that chew power and all that fun stuff. So it's all, it's all now starting to be simulated a lot more in detail, um, but that's why we call the upgrade the advanced, because it advances a lot of the systems, even further than what we already have them. Um, so we're going to do a proper check here, as if we were doing a normal takeoff, um, apart from the fact that I may need to adjust my view slightly here to be able to get certain things in view at the same time. So, okay. Well, an example of showing this as we click this to high and then back, you'll see for a brief moment we're getting different flicks on the amount of power um, that actual test there will eventually be even more important this one here because I'm actually working on getting the, all this system here to do its error checking and everything exactly how it's meant to so it'll actually throw the error readings and the like should it find a fault so okay we know that's all right we know that's all right we'll reset track IR again here we are going to check our fuel pumps have come on which they did and they reset turn our beacon light on and we're going to turn our external power units on since we're running on external power we're going to flick all this onto that turn the starter on you'll notice we lose hydraulic power and we're drawing a lot more in terms of power So what you saw happening there is the hydraulic inhibit. Um, one of the important um, items with the hydraulic system is it needs to turn itself off during initial startup so that the propellers and the like and everything are actually able to function correctly basically if you've got the hydraulic pumps on you can really damage the hydraulic system so it inhibits the hydraulics and it goes to work um, even though I've got this started we're going to now quickly jump over and look at another feature that's been added here I've completely reworked the fuel system as I've mentioned in a previous dev blog um, and I can show a small sample of that here on the ground if I start emptying out fuel from my right tank here 
you're going to notice that over time fuel's moving from the left to the right. It's gravity balancing and the pumps returning fuel that the engine's not using. And generally the tanks are trying to balance themselves out. Um, I could speed this up rather quickly if I boost my left pump I'm basically forcing more fuel from the left up to the engine of course the engine doesn't need it so the excess is going back in circulating and the fuel tanks will balance themselves out on top of this as I fly if I'm not flying generally in trim I'm going to see a shift of fuel and we'll take this bird up and quickly have a look at that. Oh, we don't exactly need those numbers. So I'm going to get ready to take this bird off. Um, Another thing you should be aware of here, if you'll notice, turning the switches on the dimmers here now, and I'm not getting any lighting. Um, this isn't a bug, I've not broken anything as you saw before, it's actually a correction to the code. Um, in the real aircraft, these two switches don't work unless the instrument lighting's turned on. So uh, we've done a fix there, that's another one that'll probably make its way into the um, main build in a free update at some point. So let's taxi here just quickly across to the runway, it's not that far away. So we'll just do a short fit, short take off here, we should be out there. When it's not like we've got tanks and or we're on, online or anything like that. So we're just going to um, get up in the air. You'll notice that as we put the gear up, for example, we get a shift in power um, while the lamps are on. If I pop the speed brake, which because of my, the way I've got this mapped at the moment, it's going to work. Uh, but let's put. If I pop the speed brake, we'd see a change in power as well. Uh, my mapping's all the way up. So, okay. As I was talking about, if I'm not flying in trim, we're going to see fuel moving about in the aircraft. So, as you can see at the moment, we've got more fuel in the left wing than in the right wing. Um, the amount of G's I'm pulling and the like affect that. If I pull more G's, gravity's higher, so it's, it'll affect it. 
Um, same goes for the balancing. I can get fuel to shift back to the other tank fairly quickly as well. At the same time, however, the system is paying attention to the fact that I am drawing fuel. Um, no, by the looks of it, I may have to check the code. It looks like my right end. Looks like we're not exactly filling up the right side there. So we're losing fuel. Small bug in the code somewhere. Just to give an example of pulling some of these circuit breakers, what we're going to do here is we are going to pull, first we're going to make certain we're in level fly. Um, Then we're going to pull the aileron and elevator trim circuit breaker here. So you'll notice, well actually you won't because you can't see me pressing it on my controls, but trust me I am, I'm trying to use my aileron and elevator trim and nothing's happening. However I can still use my rudder trim. So, we've just lost one, one system there, um, if I look over at my amps at the moment, um, get back into straight level flight here, so you'll notice at the moment we're drawing about 147.5 I'd say amps there if I put those back in we go back up to 150 so just an example there of systems the power drawer and the like all being in and their actual functions being affected by the actual um, power so if the system doesn't have power it's not going to function and so forth. Um, we can fail, for example, the fail nav one. You'll notice we've just lost the NAV1 radio. The TACAN radio is still working, but we've got no NAV1. We also lost the power for it, which isn't that much on the NAV1. Um, it's like one amp. We could fail the entire ra radio bus on that side if we wanted to, um, just by pulling the radio bus circuit and we watch basically everything stop working the power go down um, 
Seems I haven't actually tested my code fully here yet. Let's have a look what happens if I pull the SGU control panel here. Okay, so that's functioning as intended so far. I've got both systems still working. Let's pull the SGU control panel one over here. We have some messed up code because that should have killed both. But, ah uh, well, that's why this is still dev. Let's see what happens if I pull the bus tie. Looks like I busted some of my code with my updates. At least that one's working. What this should actually do though is I've only failed the EA the EADI, so we've still got the EFIS. Um, as you can see there. So that's just a general short look at the upgraded electronics in the current build for the Alpha, uh, for the Advanced. I hope you find it at least a little interesting. Um, on top of that, we've done a little bit extra work.